Beginning of the school year and the Ed Boss is here. The Dan York State of Mind program is brought to you at part by Lookout Rhode Island and Takeo Comfort Solutions. Yeah, if you don't mind, we're going to take a break from the, the national political scene. Uh, uh, next week, we will have a chance to talk about the debate, which is going to be the Super Bowl rating event of the political season. No doubt about that. And. Uh, We'll have some interesting stuff, I'm sure. You know what's popped up is an interesting conversation. It's the Cranston Republican mayoral primary that pits uh, State Representative Barbara Ann Fenton Fung against Ken Hopkins, who is in trouble because he's riding around in an MG. You know, the sports car? Doesn't have a registration. It's Ken. Yeah, it is amazing to me uh, the the capacity for self-implosion that uh, politicians have. Uh, I guess we all have, except the politicians do it in the public light. Anyway, uh, I digress. I'm just a little footloose and fancy free today. Um, and uh, the Ed Commissioner is in town. It's She's overdue, uh, my bad. Uh, but it's the beginning of the year, and I just want to get to some key issues, including but not limited to the uh, attendance uh, situation, which is making progress. A little bit of reading improvement means a lot. Uh, and things like who ought to run the tiny little school system known as the Providence City Schools. Mm -hmm. Let's start with that headline here. Uh, state votes to continue Providence Schools takeover through 2027. That's on the recommendation of the Ed Commissioner. And here's the story the Channel 12 filed. Providence Public Schools will be under state control for up to three more years. Aye. Aye. Following a unanimous vote of the state's Council on Elementary and Secondary Education Thursday night. In the next three years, there's going to be improvements. Rhode Island Education Commissioner Angelica Infante Green says the Providence Public School District does not have to achieve all of the goals in the turnaround action plan in place since 2019 to exit the state intervention. Those um, targets were aspirational. Our job now is to show that we're ready to take them back sooner. Providence Mayor Brett Smiley says the city is ready to do that as early as next summer. We need to demonstrate that we have the operational capacity, the governance capacity, uh, and the ability to take our schools back into local control, which is something that I've been consistent about wanting to do. The school district has repeatedly asked the city for more money. You know, we have students who are coming in with more needs, and we need to make sure if we're going to meet our students' needs, we're going to need the funding that's going to set that forward. Smiley did increase school funding in this year's budget and says he expects to continue to do so. But the mayor says it's going to take more than a couple of budget years to fix. The increased funding for the schools shouldn't just come from the local share contribution from Providence. It also needs to come from the state uh, and, and particularly with respect to high, high cost special needs students. Uh, this is a statewide problem that's going to require a statewide solution. Yeah, no doubt about that. The, the internal struggle that the, the city and the state have had uh, in litigation about funding is so far above the head of the average constituent out there, nobody really understands what you're fighting about. Um, maybe you can explain that. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for having me. You here. do not look any worse for the wear. <laughs> First of all, you're the most stylish eyeglass person in in the public in, in public life in Rhode Island. Number one, I was wondering how how would I look with the white? Would you, would you, did, did, <laughs> well, you have to try them on. <laughs> I, 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 I love it, and uh, and you look terrific. So, Thank you. Uh, and I say that because I know you've you know the public needs to know that uh, you've had a, a rough couple of years and you're and you're in great shape. You know, Thank so you. good Thank for you. you. Um, if I were you, I'd be like this. <laughs> you know, I feel like that some at, days. At the, beginning, at the beginning of the school year. Um, 16 things I want to get to, but let, let's jump in to this notion of special needs, special needs. That could be. Here's what the public school systems in general are not doing well at all. Explaining what the special need surge really is all about because yeah. there's a population out there that's paying the taxes that may have already had their kids through schools and whatever and, and, and who, who just who just feel like it's um like a record repeating itself yeah i've heard this yeah you've heard this and they don't really know what has happened here which yeah. is a surge in kids coming in 
ill-prepared. Um, well, you, you, you tell yeah. me. Yeah. So especially during the pandemic, there was no early intervention. So the kids are now coming in with more severe needs. Early intervention means what? So when kids identify that they are not meeting um, the markers for, let's say, speech, OT, or whatever the developmental stages are, they get early intervention. So they get speech at an early age. They get occupational therapy. That did not happen during the pandemic. And it usually mitigates them um, getting special education. So a lot of our kids are coming in straight to special education and they have greater needs. Before they just came in with like speech support that they needed, but now it's all over the spectrum and their needs are so much greater. We have a lot more kids with autism, just nonverbal. So it costs more money to educate these kids because you need a speech pathologist. You need someone that can do um, special education services, that can do the occupational therapy. So it takes all those educators to educate that one child. And, and by the way, a disclosure here, I, I, I understand what the commissioner is saying because my daughter is one. She's a speech pathologist in one of the urban school systems. And um, um, yeah, it's, it's de hard. dedicates her life as all these professionals do to these kids. It's all about the kids. It's all about the kids. It's all about the kids. But the kids are coming in. Um, in just a five-year period of time in, in a, I don't want to use, the, it wouldn't be a term that, that, that my daughter would use ever, but my interpretation is there's a deterioration of preparedness, but it feels more, it feels more health and um, uh, family cognizance to to the family's responsibilities and needs to bring these kids to some kind of level before they ask the school system to participate in their lives. Does that make any sense? Yeah, it does. And what we had before, because we had early intervention, some parents don't have the capacity to do that. That's the reality. So they relied on early intervention to get the kids ready. So now the kids are coming in really two and three years behind of where they should be developmentally. And that is a struggle because now you're asking a teacher to really um, accelerate this kid that has multiple needs. I'm sure your daughter can tell you that. We, we're just seeing it across the board, not just in Rhode Island, Massachusetts is seeing it, Maine, like we're just seeing it across the nation. You're not unfamiliar with this. No. Your, your son um, is a success story. He's a wonderful, wonderful kid, has made great strides. He's gonna be a great contributor to society. But you've had means. Yes, you've that's had absolutely means. true. Yes, yes. And even with the means, you know, it requires a lot. It requires a whole lot of support from the family. Um, but I'm someone that has access to those things. So, okay, so we're preaching to each other's choir. How, it, it seems to me that the nation has this elephant in the room. Correct. It's a net. This isn't the Providence school system. This isn't Pawtucket. This isn't uh, this, this isn't Central Falls. No. This isn't Woonsocket. This is this is everywhere. Correct. And it everywhere. crosses the socioeconomic boundaries. Let's not just say that it's only urban systems that are That's coming. Right. That this is a deterioration that has occurred. How would you like to be? I, I sound like I'm cheerleading for the commissioner, but how would you like to be the person who's setting all these standard improvement goals? Mm-hmm. And your foundational population is coming in hampered. Yeah, it's a struggle. And no one's talking about it in, in, in such a way to, to really expose it. And I don't know how you expose it because you've got to protect kids. That's right. And I think what we have to do... The from, other the, thing, from the exposure, is what correct. I'm saying. But the only thing that I can do in my capacity is really find the supports to give to districts. So we just got the largest grant we've ever gotten award for literacy, we got $40 million from the federal government because they know this is a problem. They, our, our kids are coming two and three years behind right into kindergarten, like we're starting in that place. So we have those $40 million to support teachers in the classrooms so that they can support the students. One of the things that what has- What are you doing with it? So we're gonna have coaches in the classroom, we're gonna get resources, it's from pre-K all the way up to higher ed, having those support systems. In the, Part that I think is really important when we start talking about these kids is if they don't come to school, they can't learn, Dan. And we have a national crisis where our, the uh, chronic absenteeism is off the charts. We have kids that come to school only 50% of the time. Chronic absenteeism is 18 days. 18 days equals one month, and they only come to school 10 months. And that is the minimum. We have kids that are you mean out the 30 days. You the governor made this a priority. You're making, you're making, yes. you, you've made yes. a dent. 
Yes, we have made a dent. Um, we were actually at the White House. We invited the White House. The governor spoke at the White House about the work that we're doing. We're actually getting national attention. We own, we're the only state that has an actual real-time data dashboard. But the problem is that the kids that we see that actually come to school are benefiting from the instruction. There's a 20 percentage point gap. And parents need to understand that. Like, it's a disservice for the kids not to be in school. The ones that come are actually performing very well. But the ones that are not coming into our school, they're already coming delayed, and then they don't come consistently. That's a problem. We have a huge problem, and it is a problem in How every state. How did you state. make a dent? So w one of the things that we did with that leaderboard that we have is that we asked uh, local politicians to make it their responsibility as well. It can't all be on the backs of the schools making phone calls, mayors have called robocalls. We have had incentives for parents and students. We have attendance teams, and every single school has an attendance team, and they knock on doors, they go out. Those are the things that we have to do. And then when we get them in, what do we do with kids that are three and four years behind? Hmm. That's the challenge that we have before what us. What do you do with kids that are three and four years behind? Well, you know, is provide some of these resources. So one of the things that we were doing or, or we're doing in Providence is that we have these sessions for kids, regardless of what grade level, where they are in math. If you only have three levels of acquisition of, of math, then that's where you're going to be. You need those skills. You can't do algebra if you can't add. So these are the things that we are really looking at. What are the skills that the kids are missing? so that we can build those. And you know, the governor has been a big um, proponent of learning outside of school as well. And that, it's important. It's gonna take more than just what happens in the school day for well, this you, to happen. You, you've been supportive of his, of, his, Absolutely. of his outside the school thing, rather than pushing back like a lot of traditional uh, educators might have been doing. A lot of mayors have been got involved in this whole, this whole, this whole idea, and you've got a, you've got, um, you know, a special leader design for, for this. And so uh, are you seeing any, any manifestation of it yet? Is it, is it a work in progress? It takes too long it's, it's, for now it takes, to understand? It takes a couple of years. You know, as a nation, I don't know if people know this, there's a, a, a worldwide exam called PISA. The United States went to the lowest that it's ever been right now after the pandemic in math. It is the, the, the worst that we have been, and all the nations have gone down. But there is a problem that we have to really deal with, which is getting the supports to the teachers that they need. Money, money is an issue. We need, I know that there are people that say we already put enough money into the school system, but we really don't. The needs that we have right now are gonna require more. If it and were that burden me, should be local, state, I think federal. it should be all three. It should be local, it should be it's state, hard but to it's get local taxpayers to, to, to want to move their property taxes into uh, higher investments in the schools. And that's just what you and Smiley, uh, the mayor, uh, Mayor Smiley, and are kind of fighting over all the time. Yes, yes. And I think that the city has a responsibility, and we've, you know, the mayor and I have discussed this, of putting more money into the school system. That's important. I mean, the school system is one of the most important things that we have in our state. So why don't we use that as a bridge? I know that I could talk to the commissioner all day long about this stuff, but the governance issue is really an important thing, and uh, we'll talk about that when we get back to this. What I think is most constructive going forward is that uh, the city, the school board, city council uh, demonstrate to PPSD, to ride, uh, that we're ready. And, and so that's how I think we constructively move forward. I would like to see if we can trim uh, some time off of this extension. And, uh, and I understand and acknowledge we're not ready to take the schools back for the first day of school in four days from now. Yeah, uh, no blank, Sherlock. I, I, no, really, it, it's like, look, he's the mayor. He's got to show a level of, of, of serious interest in wanting to do what most cities do, which is to run their own school systems. It was taken from them as all part of your 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 entry entree into the state, uh, which feels like yesterday and ten years, uh, twenty fifty right. years ago, doesn't That's it? That's right. It feels right? like both. It yes. feels like both. Um, who's he kidding? First of all, the governance issue in in the city of Providence is such that they're trying to fix themselves first. They're an appointed school board, and now they're going to go through a remodel in terms of half elected, half appointed. Yes. I wouldn't give the school system back to, to it, it, it's got nothing to do with people by name. The system itself is not prepared to operate. 
Yeah. They, they can, they can, they can, I, I don't need to know that from an intimate point of view. Anybody who understands government has to look at this thing and say, well, wait a second, you want the burden, the challenge of taking back the governance of the school system when your governance model is in flux. Yeah. And, and well, wasn't that one of your points? Yes, it was one of my points. And I'm also worried about the fact that it's, it's an even number, right? You have the elected and the appointed, it's an even number. And, um, and there- Are you arguing that they should change the model? I, I, that's something that I would argue. That's something that I am going to argue because I think it's a challenge. I don't know how they move forward. Right now, they struggle to move forward. Can you have input on how that, that goes? Um, Other than just uh, from the, uh, the cheap seats uh, suggesting? I, I don't, I don't think I do, but I can make recommendations when it goes back because I think that this is going to be a real challenge. It, it is a challenge now. Every one of the meetings are very challenging. And if you listen to the school conversations, board meetings, school board meetings. Do you attend them? No, I do not attend them. If you listen to the conversations, they're very rarely about kids. And that's part of the work that needs to happen. I know that there's some members of the school board that are really want this to work and are very serious about it. That transition is supposed to happen when? So the transition, we're, we have it until 2027, no, but no, we no, want no, to start. No, the school board uh, uh, going oh, to appoint Oh, in January. Until... So they, they're having their election now, and then it'll be a new school board in January. Well, you better hurry up if you want them to change the way that thing works. <laughs> yeah, I don't think that there's time now. We've been talking about it, but I think when it goes back, I think that there's there has to be something that... that you think it'll be evident when it goes back that, oh, that, the, that the numbers don't work? The numbers can't work. Gotcha. You know, I, I, I just don't Which see how that happens. Which is why the time. In, in, in addition to other operational and jurisdictional and administrative uh, and vision things and all that kind of thing, you need to that 2027, it, it, it seems. I think, the mayor, I think the mayor knows that. I think he's going through the motions in terms of, what's he supposed to say? We don't want it? You know, he's, got to, he's got to do this dance, it seems to me. Uh, and eventually, the school system has got to operate itself. I mean, it the does. city's got to it operate does. itself. We don't want to keep the school system, but we want to make sure that there are structures in place so that they can be successful. You remember at the very beginning, the schools were crumbling. We now have opened four new, brand new buildings. And every kid, by 2030, will be in a brand new building. Every single kid. And at that point, when I first came in, we were That's trying progress. to paint the outside of a building. Right. Like we were we trying would sit to here and that. I'd be yelling at you about, yes. <laughs> about, about the way to get in and fix these dumps. Correct. Yeah. Uh, and so, and so that progress is, listen, this, it's funny, the school system really doesn't get a lot of attention because there's so much other crazy news all the time, mm -hmm. right? Um, but, you know, you, you got you to gotta keep on inching along here. What I worry about is you give it back to them and then the dog that caught the car. And all of a sudden yeah. they're like, oh boy. And then non-performance perpetuates or it falls down again. And then what do you do? Go back in? Well, uh, yeah, that we can't let that happen. That's what we don't want to do. So at one point the state took over Hope High School. The school made progress. And then when it went back, it declined again. And what was the difference? What happened that caused the decline, the, the improvement and then the decline? What, what, what do your notes say on that? Because that was well, not you. No, that was not me. What we saw was, what, what our history tells us that there was a different governance model. The school operated more independently than it, it was not under the jurisdiction of the, the model that exists. You know, the school board, the city, it was under rides, the state's purview. So there was progress. The same way we just saw, you know, Harvard just put out a, a report on, you know, Providence mitigated learning loss more than other districts in Massachusetts and, and Connecticut. Success. That is success. Nobody like, this wants is to a, hear that. This is a district that never experienced success, and they've um, moved faster than other districts. They've recovered faster. Is that does that mean that they are where they should be? Absolutely. How's not. your relationship with the rank and file right now? I, it's I been think tenuous we have a good. We, I think we have a good relationship. I think we've moved for the first time. The students made one and a half year gain to two year gains this last year internally. And what that means, the RICAS is grade level. But if these kids are two and three years behind, they have to make more than a year gain. They have to make a year and a half to two year gains just to be on grade Teachers level. Teachers feel supported, you think? I, I think so. That's what we hear. If I, if I brought the union leader in, would she say that? I hope she would. <laughs> I hope she would. And I think we've been very collaborative. I will tell you, we have a brand new, uh, the brand new schools, redesigned schools, and we worked with the union. To, teachers had to reapply for those positions. 
to be part of those schools. That's a big deal. That was a big concession on the union's part to make sure that these failing schools can have some success. Still, you're throwing up $10,000 signing bonuses for special needs yes. educators. Yes, there is a shortage. You want to do a commercial here? Uh, absolutely. If you have a license, if you want to be a special education teacher, please, we have a website called Educate 401. It's one-stop shop for the entire state. We run hiring fairs. There is a need for special education teachers. One of our higher ed institutions graduated one early childhood special education teacher last year, and the year before, just two. We are, we're, we're in crisis. Yeah. I don't think anyone's talking about it, but as a nation, we're in crisis. All right, uh, we'll have like uh, an entire minute or two to talk about uh the rumor that there are actually other schools in the state of the <laughs> You feel like you get enough hours of the day? <laughs> Never. Well, I, I, Never. I can imagine. Um, short thought on what the rest of the state looks like at this point? Well, I, th I think we're all they're doing the same things, right? One of the things that was really important for us is attendance. Everybody has been working on attendance. I was actually at East Greenwich where the high school kids are putting together a toolkit for us so that we can share it. We were there celebrating because they had the highest attendance rate for high schools in Rhode Island. Um, so we've, su we've seen tremendous growth in all the districts in the state of Rhode Island. That's been really important. And they've been looking at you know, how do they focus in? You know, we started the, the, um, the Right to Read Act, which is the science of reading, and that takes a couple of years, so we're almost there. Everybody has to be trained by 2025, and that is gonna support a lot of what happens in the classroom. So we're just, you know, keeping our heads down, moving forward, the superintendents are really moving the agenda, they're working really hard. To, and some of them have taken the course themselves to try to help and try to uh, supervise in this area. You know, I, I will tell you that um, 20 seconds. there's a lot of innovation that's happening in our districts. And then we also have AI that we're trying to tackle as mm. well. You know, trying to have safeguards for the kids as well as what does instruction look like now in the world of AI? We should we do another two shows on just the culture wars that are going on out there and all that, right? <laughs> well, Gosh. I'll give you a break. Anyway. Please. Thanks for coming. Well, let's stay in touch. we we'll get you. you on the radio soon. Thank Good you. luck in the school year. Thank you. Thank you. Final word. Yeah, we'll take a look at that debate. It's going to be something next week. And, of course, uh, we'll talk about it weekdays 3 to 6 on WPRO. Enjoy the school year. Bye.